Hi, my name is Brandon Grazley. I'm a high school computer science teacher. I'm going to show you how to set up Android Studio to program in Java. So here I have it running. I'm going to go down to the configure area right now and choose settings. I'll show you a couple of things that I recommend to my students. Let's go to appearance and behavior and choose appearance. The theme is currently IntelliJ. Let's change that to Darkula and press apply. It makes everything nice and dark and easier to read, easier on the eyes. I like to personally use a custom font. You don't have to change this. The one I use is Noto Sans Display. And I'm going to increase the size to make it easier for you to see. There's 16 point. That's it for the overall appearance. In Under Editor, we have two things to change. General, Auto Import under Java. Add unambiguous imports on the fly. That'll save you a little bit of typing. Let's apply that. And further down is font. Uh, I don't like the monospaced font. My favorite is Source Code Pro. And I'll make that bigger for you as well. Let's go with 16. And I think we're ready to go there. So now let's start by making our new project. We'll start with an empty activity. Uh, later you can try some other things. Give it a name. And you'll notice under package name, I've already done this before, but yours probably says com.example.myfirstapp. You can change this to sort of the reversed uh, parts of a domain name that you own. So I own grazely.ca, so I put in ca.grazely. Um, if you don't own a domain already and you would just want to leave it as com.example, that's fine too. I found a save location. You'll notice that it takes whatever I typed here, and it uses that as part of the package name and the folder name. I'm programming in Java, so instead of uh, Kotlin, the default language, I'm using uh, Java because I'm more familiar with it. And I've left it at API 15, that's the default, and that's plenty fine. If you want to do something that requires a newer API, if you know that, go ahead and increase the API level. Otherwise, just leave it there. Let's hit finish, and Android Studio will build the app. Now, if you have made an app before, if this isn't your first time running Android Studio, then this won't take very long. But if this is your very first time running it, that could take quite a while. It makes several minutes. It might need to download some stuff. So please be patient with it. I'm going to minimize a couple of these little areas here. This area is the Java file, which is the logic of the program. The other tab up here is the layout area, the XML file, which describes the layout. It currently has one text view inside of a constraint layout. We're going to learn about that in another video. Um, we are almost ready to play the app. If I press this play button, though, I'll get a little error. No target device found. No device is available. So we first have to either um, send this app onto a phone, of like a physical device, or better, let's just make a virtual device using the AVD manager, Android Virtual Device Manager. Create a virtual device. You have to choose, basically choose a phone that you want to emulate. I'm going to choose the Pixel 3. I'll press Next. Choosing a system image, I'm going to use the most recent version of Android uh, as I'm recording this, which is Q. I've already got it downloaded. If you don't have one, you'll have to click the Download button and wait for it. And just hit Next and Finish. We don't need to change anything else. Uh, there's my virtual device. It's only half a gigabyte right now. It will grow very, very quickly when you start using it, so make sure you have some disk space. Now, you'll see there it is up in my list. When I press Play, it will open the emulator, which takes a little while the first time, and then it will run my app. So let's click that and we'll wait for it. Okay, once the device is up and running, your app will be installed on it, and then it will launch automatically. Okay, there's my first app with the Hello World text view in the middle. And uh, if you want to continue on to the next video, then I'll explain how to lay out some user interface components on the screen, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, thanks.